Welcome to Dietitian in Your Kitchen. I'm Laura Poland, Registered Dietitian. I want to thank Amy from Facebook. She asked me the question for this month's video blog. And her question was this, how sugar works in the body, what's enough, what's too much, and the difference between the natural sugars like honey, maple syrup, and refined ones. I think we, she was referring to table sugars and things like that at that point. So let's start with how sugar works in the body. Sugar in the body works because car basically sugar is a form of a carbohydrate, a bigger group of nutrients called carbohydrates. Uh, sugars generally, what Amy's referring to I believe, are empty calorie sugars. So they really don't provide us with any kind of nutrition except they actually do give us some energy because that's what the body uses for energy is glucose and sugar breaks down into glucose. All of your carbohydrates you consume will be broken down and converted into glucose in the body. And so that blood sugar, that glucose in the body is what is used by every cell in our body for energy or for doing the functions that that cell needs to do. Everything from our brain and central nervous system to muscles to everything, the way the body works, it's using glucose for fuel and for energy. So we need energy, we need glucose, and it's very important. And the other thing the body does with sugar is, or glucose, is it will actually store it so that we have some supplies because it has to have that constant supply of blood sugar for our brain and central nervous system. So your body wants to keep sugar regulated in the body, understand? So when we talk about, when Amy was asking about what, what sugar does in the body, but then she was asking about what's enough and what's too much. Well, so the body is going to, <laughs> in terms of simple sugars, like the table sugar and the maple syrup and the things that she asked about, our body actually doesn't need those because we get carbohydrates and sugar from fruits, vegetables, whole grains, your complex carbohydrates like beans and things like that, those have those complex carbohydrates that are harder for the body to break down to use as glucose, but are, it still will work the same way. It will break down and become glucose in our body and work to fuel our body, and that's what we want. If we do not take in carbohydrates at all in times of emergency or in times of people who are trying to um, go into that ketogenic or Atkins-like diet and they're trying to really reduce their carbohydrates really low to where below where the body wants us to do, um, what happens is the body uses a backup system. And this is great for emergencies, for if you get in a car accident or something like that, and you, your body still needs fuel, right? Your body actually needs more fuel because it's trying to heal and deal with the stress of the accident. So if you can't eat for some reason or another, your body has these backup systems in place. It will use protein and fat for your energy, and it has a backup system that will allow it to convert that to glucose, but it always has to convert it to glucose for your bodies to use for fuel. So no matter what, you need sugar, and so don't say that we don't need sugar, right? So. But what we talk about is the empty sugars. So your, your table sugars, your maple syrups, and honey, those are all simple forms of sugar. There's really no nutrition to them except for the calories and the glucose that's in them. Now, the one exception is I have seen a lot of evidence-based research on honey providing possibly some benefit to our immune systems because of um, if we use local honey, it can actually help with our immunity. So um, I would give an edge to honey over any other kind of syrup. All the other kind of syrups, generally speaking, there's really not a lot going on there except it's adding sugar and the type of sugar that our bodies are so close to what our bodies need it enters the bloodstream quickly and the body uses it quickly and then once more 
So what we need to do is balance our carbohydrates and make sure we're getting those other carbohydrates from and sugars from fruits and vegetables and milk that has protein also that will also slow down how fast we're consuming those carbohydrates. So I hope that clears up a little bit about the way sugar works in the body and everything like that. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to post and I will address those. And um, Amy also asked an interesting question about how much do we need. So when we need carbohydrates, we need to have about 50, well, about 45 to 55 percent of our calories should be coming from carbohydrates. Again, it's your body's preferred fuel source. It's only four calories per gram. It's a great, great way to go for your calories. But we need to focus on the um, plant based, the fruits, the vegetables, and the whole grains. And so that's about how much we need is about 45 to 55 percent. I think Amy's question was about the simple carbohydrates though or the added sugar in our diet and the recommendation now the new recommendations for dietary guidelines came out and the recommendation is for only 10 percent or less of our calories to come from sugar and added sugar in the diet so that can be kind of hard to do because we're talking about for like a 2,000 calorie diet that's the equivalent of about 12 grams of sugar and so that, that's not a lot of added sugar in a day if you think about if you're a pop drinker or something like that. Um, each can of pop has your daily allowance of sugar basically right there, a little bit less if it's a can. If it's a bottle, you've gone over. So it's very easy to overdo the sugar and the added sugars in the diet. So. I hope this helps for dietitian in your kitchen. This is Laura Pullen. Thank you.